Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I wanted to share with you guys a fun project that kind of takes use of uh, some origami paper if you happen to have it around and you want to use it. But it's more of really a craft project. Uh, I thought I'd show you guys how to make a, a magic wallet. And uh, these are always so much fun to have and they're just fun to, you know, surprise kids with and grown-ups too. I still don't get how it works, but <laughs> it's always a fun thing to have. And um, I thought it'd be kind of a neat little craft project for Mother's Day. Uh, there's a couple of pockets here in the front if you want to put stuff in there as well. And it's a great way to use some paper if you have just a tiny little bit lying around and you still really would like to use it for something, then it could be a good use of that. Um, if you're, uh, and all, all you really need for making it is some hard, uh, thicker kind of paper and then the decorative paper that you'll use um, and then some decorative masking tape for the um, edges and a little bit of uh, scissors, of course, and glue and um, it, because of the way I'm going to show you guys the technique for putting the little the ribbons here, you don't necessarily need to have other tape around, but if you prefer to use something else other than this, um, I, I just folded my tape over for the ribbon. Um, if you have some other actual ribbon ribbon you want to use, then you can uh, use that, of, of course, as well. So uh, I thought I'd just kind of show you guys how to put this all together. And uh, you can use the technique of knowing how to line up the ribbons and, and try different uh, approaches to making the outer part of the wallet. That's, you know, totally up to you guys. But I just hadn't had a chance to share this with project with you guys yet. And it's a, one, of, one of my favorites. So I'll show you guys really quick here what you need. Um, like I said, you need some thicker paper and then uh, accent colored paper to go with it. So uh, I just used some like thick printer paper that I had and um, you know, it's it's a pretty good, good weight. Like, kind of like cardstock, I suppose. Um, and you need four sheets of that that's 11 by 7.7 seven seven about. Um, you know, these dimensions don't have to be exact, exact. I just felt this was pretty good for putting in the cards, business cards and, and uh, gift cards and such. But um, you can kind of play around with the size, of course. But you need four of those. And then you also need uh, four sheets of the accent paper that's 10 by 7 to put on top of that. So that you can kind of have your accent there. You also need a sheet of paper for the pocket that's 11 by 5.7 and then the piece on top that's 10 by 5 and then the other pocket 11 by 4.7 and then the accent for that at 10 by 4. And like I said you need some glue, some scissors and I'm going to use some masking tape, decorative masking tape um, and I just picked a color that kind of accents the paper that I have. You can certainly do lots of different ways with this. There's just some guidelines for you guys to follow if you're interested in making it exactly the way that I was going to show you guys. So some things to kind of keep in mind. Um, but what we really want to do is, I have everything all pre-cut of course here, but what we're just going to do is start off by creating the, paste, the pieces that we need. And um, so I just first start with putting the accent color onto my pieces of paper that I have here. So if you just take like the larger base piece and then an accent color to go with that, and then I can just go ahead and put some glue on it. Then it's always good to have some good glue that can really, you know, do a good job of keeping everything in place. And uh, I'll put it on here. Now you could also try a different technique of instead of putting like an accent color on the inside, you could wrap the pieces of the thicker paper with some wrapping paper too, with your with your specialty paper. And that's another technique that you can use for making these kinds of projects. Uh, this one, I just thought, you know, kind of created a neat effect when you put the um, masking tape over it, because you can kind of see through that a little, so you can see the pattern and the white edge of the border. But you just want to kind of put that on there in the middle. And I'm just going to repeat that step then for my remaining three sides here. So I'll just fast forward so you don't have to watch all that. So I've got these four completed with the uh, inner piece there on top of those. And then we're just going to do the same kind of steps for my pocket pieces that I've had here. And I'm just putting a pocket on one side set, but you could also do both sides. So if that was the case, you'd want to, of course, make double of that. But um, I just chose to put it on one side. But like I said, it's just kind of up to you of how you guys prefer to do it. 
So just put this on here and then the smaller one too. So I've got all these pieces on here. Now I'm just gonna put the two that are gonna be for my pockets to the side for a second and look at the pieces that are for the um, main parts and components of this project. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, start off by looking at the pieces that will serve as the inside of my uh, wallet where the card and the overlaying of stuff will be. And you know you can kind of pick which two you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and use these two because they're kind of similar. And um, just go ahead and put the uh, masking tape on all four edges. So uh, you could start off, you know, I like to do long ways first and then the other side. It's just sort of up to you guys how you prefer to do stuff here. There's no rules of how, how to do it really, but you know, you want to just kind of cover up, uh, you know, obviously putting about half of the tape on here covering up part of the white and part of the pattern, and then just rolling it over so that you can then fold this over onto the other side and create a nice edging for that. And then you just trim the edge as close to it as you can. And I'm just gonna repeat that then for the other side over here. So when you're finished, you should get something that kind of looks like this. And you've got your edges nice and clean then with a nice accent color. And I like how the different layers of the masking tape add a nice little effect with the different like gradations of colors. So that's kind of cool. And I'm just going to repeat those steps for the other piece that I have here as well. So when you're finished, you should have two pieces that look something like this. And then what I want to do is I'm going to create a set of pieces that can go first crisscross on one side. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, actually put my crisscross on this side. I think that'll look cooler. And then I'll keep this guy over here. Um, so you want to just kind of take your tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to trim the edges of this so that when I fold it in half, I have a little bit of the tape still sticking out so that it can just snag on to the other side. And then you don't need to have any other extra tape around when you do this. So you want to just kind of imagine that you need enough to just go beyond everything here. You don't need it to be too long. And I'll cut it off. And then what I want to do is just kind of trim off just a tiny little bit down here, like about a centimeter or so. And I'm gonna cut the left side from both ways. So cut the left side, rotate it around, still with the sticky side down, cut the left side again. And this way, when you put it on, you will have the uh, right part sticking up and sticking down for it to connect to the other side. So I've got this piece kind of cut like this. Then I'm just going to fold it in half to create a ribbon in the middle and then just a little section at both ends that still has some exposed tape. Now obviously you want to try to keep this as uh, straight as you can because if any part of the tape is sticking out then it might you know, wind up sticking to your money and stuff. So that's not so good. But you should get something like this then. There's this nice kind of ribbon-like piece and then there's a little bit of sticky tape on both sides one side up and one side down. 
And then I'm just going to get sort of the same thing one more time. So same length because we want to do crisscross here. And just do the same process again of cutting up just this little notch of tape and getting that cut off. And that just makes one less, you know, material that you have to have when you're making stuff. It's always nice to not have to have too many things that you need to make something. So and I'm just going to fold this in half too. So now I have my two pieces here and what I want to do is I'm just going to make sure that the part that has the sticky part facing down is facing down and I'll do this one here too. So you want the sticky sides that are facing down on the left and the sticky sides that are facing up on the right. And just try to get it as lined up in the middle and in the right X pattern as you like. You don't want it to be too big because we want to be able to have the uh, other strips on the other side. So you want it to kind of just run right through the middle. Try to find a good spot for it if you can. And then I'm just going to take the sides over here first and tuck them underneath. Keep things as flat as you can as you do this. And because we've got that little bit of tape there, it just sticks nicely for you. Lay this down flat and then take your other piece and just put it right here even with this edge. And try to lay that flat out and then flip it over. And hopefully everything should be able to go kind of the way you want it to. If it seems like it's not quite going the right angle, you can kind of pick it up a second. Give it a little tug to get it going there. So we get something like this. Then I'm going to take and do a very similar process for the parallel lines across the top. So this time I'm just going to take my tape and I don't need it to go too far because I'm going to just run it right across the top and I'm going to do the same technique of creating a little tab down here and again you don't want to make this tab too much because you don't want it to interfere with what you're looking at here with the uh, kind of ribbon like part of the material there at the top and again like I said this is just a technique of using masking tape but you can use just real ribbon uh, string you can use all sorts of different things for this part paper so um, I've got this guy here though and I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it in half this part can be a little hard, but you do want to try to, I can't see from this angle, so I'm going to pull it out of my camera angle. Sorry about that. Get that to lay flat. So I've got, again, the part that's sticky on one end up and one end down. And then I'm just going to take and do one more. So I've got both of these pieces now and I want to do the same thing again where I have the sticky side this time actually opposite I want the sticky side facing up on the left and on the left of both sides and the part that's facing sticky side facing down on the right and I'm just going to go ahead and line this up but I first want to just kind of open this section and line put this underneath find a good spot here that looks nice Go ahead and secure this one by tucking it behind. And we'll get the other side here in a second on that one. But again, sticky side up here in the middle. 
and then going across here, trying to keep about the same space and tucking this side behind. Flip it over and you can kind of double check what you've got here. You could kind of lift this up a little bit, make sure that it's as straight as you can get it with a nice tension right there. And I'll get this side too. The nice thing about the masking tape too is that it's pretty forgiving. It lets you kind of start over if you don't like where it is, as long as you're using regular paper. Sometimes origami paper does not like to have tape on it and then take it off because the fibers will come off with it. So, But you should get something then that looks like this. And this is basically the piece that you need then to make the magic wallet. Now, obviously, just like this, it's done, but you want to make it look prettier on this side. So we've got half of it finished, basically. So this side is completed, and, and then we'll just be gluing the other two pieces to it. So I'll just put this to the side for a second. And then what we want to do is take the other pieces that we have here and create the side that has our uh, pockets on it, as well as the side that is just um, plain. So I'm going to pick one of these to be my pocket holder here and then just kind of put these on here as well. Kind of figure out which way you like to do that. That butterfly's upside down. That's weird. I'll turn it over. There we go. <laughs> so basically what I want to do here is I'm just going to use, before I put everything together, I do want to put a little bit of tape on both of these pockets just on the edge that I think is going to be the top. Now, because I'm kind of looking at my pattern and wanting it to line up nicely, I know I want this to be the top and this to be the top. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of, I'm gonna put the masking tape across the edge of that. Not a little bit, but obviously enough to be what we need to here. So I'll kind of put that on here. And then just cut the excess off of that. And then I'm going to just repeat that for the other edge too. There's no reason to tape sides that you don't need to and it just adds extra bulk for this part. So if you can just first get this part kind of figured out and then put everything together all at once, it makes things a nice weight I think for that. So I've got the two um, edges there, top edges, complete for my pocket. And then I can go ahead and connect everything by first, I like to just start with the bottom of everything here. So again, I'm just going to take a whole section here. Basically, I'm only going to be going over this top layer. Flip everything over, and it helps because everything's not stuck together yet. We want to first just make sure that this layer is lined up as nice as it can be. And then this other outermost layer. Then take the edge and bring it over here. So I've got those kind of connected. Now, of course, the middle's not really being held on with anything, so you want to take care not to lose what you're working on here. I know I've got the top and bottom ones, but this middle piece could pop right out. So I've got that done. Then I'm just going to go ahead and, for the sake of what I've been doing with my pattern and the ways of layering, I'm going to do this top piece first and then do the sides last because that's just the way I've been doing stuff for these. Um, you know, I don't know if it matters really in the end of how everything layers on top of itself, but that's kind of the way I was doing stuff. So I'll get this guy on top of here. And then I'll do the sides. And then that will be able to secure the pocket side of my magic wallet. This is a lot of stuff here, but you just, I think getting just one layer of this tape works pretty good. It's pretty sturdy. And then the other side as well. So 
so that when I'm finished, I should have something that looks like this that has my two pockets and a nice completed, nice clean edge. And then I have the one last piece that's the other side of my wallet. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the framing around that with the masking tape to finish things off. So once that's completed, I have the other two pieces done. And then what we're just going to do is put some glue on the other side of our stuff here to finish everything off. And um, I like to kind of have it so that if we have it like this, um, if we flip it over, then I like to have these little pockets facing towards the seam of everything. Um, that's just the way that I've been doing stuff and it seemed to kind of feel natural in my hands when I was putting stuff in it, but you can kind of play around with it and see what you think too. So basically we're just going to put a whole bunch of glue on this side and put it right on here. And then it helps to kind of, you know, put it underneath something heavy for a while to keep it nice and secure so that you know that you've got all the edges glued down really good. But I'm just going to go ahead and put a whole bunch of glue on this side. especially on the edges if you can to really get a nice clean finished piece here. And then the other side as well. And I'm going to kind of see which way I'd like this to look if I can. A bunch of glue on this side and you could certainly use double-sided tape if you like that can work really good too for these kinds of projects sort of just up to you what you'd like it to be Put my glue away. Like I said, it really does help to kind of have it, you know, secured somewhere for a while so that it can be really nice and uh, flattened out good. I got a little bit of glue there. <laughs> but when you're done, you should have something then that uh, closes up like this and looks nice with the outer fold here and then has the magic wallet on the inside. Now, for the most part with the magic wallet, and I, because the glue hasn't set on this, I'm not gonna show you guys with that one, but over here, if you make sure that the glue is secured, if you put something over here on either side, it doesn't really matter, but if you open it and close it and you give it a little snap, it should be able to go onto the other side. Now, using stuff like, uh, you know, gift cards and business, uh, credit cards and things like that, it can kind of pull with time on your on your piece that you have here. So if you want to avoid that, you know, if it's money, paper, receipts, then it just pulls really nice and easily over to the other side. But with something harder like a card like this, if you want to avoid a, a lot of excess wear and tear on the ribbons, then it helps to just slide it into one side first if you like, and it doesn't matter which one you choose, but just slide it in and then when you open it, it'll be over there, of course, automatically. So this just depends on how you want to use the, the uh, magic wallet in that sense. But like I said, if you're using paper pieces, then it'll work just fine. You can, you can just put it in without having it slipped underneath, but the kind of thicker piece of things can sometimes kind of put a little extra tear and wear on those. So you can kind of look out for that. But that is basically how you can create a cute little magic wallet that's perfect for Mother's Day. You can pick your favorite origami paper, um, colors that she likes for the outer part of the um, edging and such, and, and have a lot of fun with it. You know, you don't have to put it together this way. There's lots of different ways that you could choose to decorate the board paper. You can wrap your pieces. You can uh, just use really nice uh, cardstock from the beginning um, and then just cover one side with something when you're done um, after you get these ribbons laid out. So, so many fun things that you can do. Uh, just keep in mind that you want to make sure that the space you're using here does not go beyond 
and interrupt where the parallel lines are. Um, and other than that, there's really not many other rules for how to put this together. It can just be whichever way works for you. But um, I hope you guys can have a lot of fun making that. And I'll have some more fun projects to share with you guys in the days to come. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.